Every time I find myself at an Italian potluck type meal where everyone's bringing something that they made, there are inevitably two desserts that always make an appearance. One is tiramisu. Everyone knows tiramisu. And there's always someone who makes one. The second is a dessert that in many ways is similar to tiramisu. In fact, if you didn't look particularly closely, you might even think that it was a tiramisu. This dessert is called zuppa inglese, which means English soup. Every time that I'm given the choice between a tiramisu and a zuppa inglese, I always go for the tiramisu because frankly, I've never really liked Zuppa Inglese that much. My big problem with the dessert always was that, ironically, it was too soupy. I thought the dish just wasn't for me until Ava made her recipe for me for the first time very recently, and it completely changed my mind. I'm now obsessed with this dessert, and if you put that and a tiramisu in front of me, the decision is much more difficult to make. A lot of people have asked us about Zuppa Inglese, so I thought maybe you guys would want to learn a little bit about this kind of strange dessert and see how Ava makes it, because you might enjoy the recipe as much as I do. Okay, you ready to make some soup? Si, Alper, I'm ready to make some English soup. Zuppa Inglese. In order to start with our zuppa inglese, we need to make a Spanish bread. Pan di Spagna. Usually the tiramisu is made with uh, savoyardi, what you in America know as uh, ladyfinger, and, uh, and they are uh, hard, hard, see, let's call them hard cookies. Here, the zuppa inglese is made with this sponge cake that it's a little bit more uh, soft. A sponge. This sponge cake, this pan di spagna is a very uses, very simple ingredients. Use just three ingredients: egg, sugar, and flour. The first step is to beat the eggs with the sugar, and we need to do this for 20 minutes, which means that 19 are not enough. 21 is okay. At least 20 minutes. See. Si. And I know that you can't do by your hands, so you need uh, an hand mixer. Once I did actually also with the one with the... Oh, the like hand crank. See, it was so, <laughs> it was so funny and it worked. Why is it important to beat the eggs for so long? Because beating the egg for so long uh, gives the strength to our uh, Spanish bread, pan de España, to rise in the oven. Because this is a cake that doesn't use baking powder. I know that uh, on the internet, on the web, you can find recipes with baking powder, but this is not the right one. This is another very important step. So you need to use a sifter to add your flour. And pay attention because uh, you need to add the flour in uh, three times, not all uh, at once. You need uh, to fold the flour inside because uh, we need a lot of air to make a good <laughs> Spanish bread. Kind of reminds me of how you mix the mascarpone cream for a See, tiramisu. Because we don't want uh, our dough to collapse. I choose to bake uh, my pan di spagna in this kind of dish. I choose to do it round. You can make it also squared, also rectangular. It doesn't really matter. Important is that you use parchment paper. Otherwise, the pan di spagna will stick. Another very important tip when you do pan di spagna is that you don't know, how do you say? 
crash, no crash, you don't know. Oh, like bang it down to settle it? Yes, because in this way you will break uh, all the bubbles. Uh, but these bubbles are what makes our pan di spagna rise. So be gentle with it. Now we bake it at 170 degrees Celsius for about 25, 30 minutes. While the pan di spagna is baking, we can start to make our custard. The first step for our custard is to separate the yolks from the egg white because we are going to use just the yolks. Now is the moment that the sugar goes in with the egg yolks and with a wooden spoon you mix. Flour. For our custard, I'm, use, uh, I'm using a whole milk. Here you can choose to put inside some vanilla, how do you call it? Stecca di vaniglia. Vanilla beans? Yeah. Or lemon peel. I like my custard with a little bit of cinnamon flavor. So I'm going to add some cinnamon. And what we need to do is to heat this uh, a little bit, uh, which means that we don't need it to, we don't need to bring uh, the milk uh, to the boiling point, but we need just to warm it, warm it up a little bit. Now that the milk uh, is enough warm, uh, what we are going to do is add some of it in our egg mixture. And we start to dilute, 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 dilute the egg mixture with the milk. After you are sure that all the egg mixture is uh, the, the diluted, diluted, diluted in uh, the small amount of milk that we add, it's time to add all the milk. And now we place our custard on the stove, very low heat, because otherwise uh, two things can happen. Or you burn your custard, <laughs> or your custard will be all attached to the bottom. So very, very low heat and always stir. What we are looking for is to thickener our custard. Usually it will take about 15 minutes. We need a custard that is uh, thick but soft at the same time. So this is the consistency that uh, your custard should have. The characteristic of Zuppa Inglese is that uh, it's made with white custard like this uh, and chocolate custard. So what I'm going to do now is to divide in equal part the custard that I made. The white one we cover with plastic paper and we need to put the plastic paper in contact with our custard. So this will avoid that when the custard is cooled, there is a very bad crust. That Skin. Is Yes, and this we'll put on aside. Chocolate version, I'm going to add some uh, unsweetened cocoa powder because the custard is already sweet. And with a whisk. That smells so chocolatey and yummy. <laughs> Like before, we cover also this with plastic paper. Now we let them completely cool down at room temperature. Then we place them in the fridge overnight. And because uh, we need uh, to let them sleep uh, for one night, yesterday evening I made other, uh, the same custard. And in the morning, uh, it looks like that. Soft, but not too soft. And now we can make our uh, English soup. 
zuppa inglese. This is our Spanish bread, pan di spagna. I'm not going to use uh, the fresh one because uh, it's better if you prepare the pan di spagna at least one day before. Because right now it's very fresh, it's too soft and it will become uh, too mushy in your zuppa inglese. That's why yesterday I made another pan di spagna. So it's a little bit firmer now? See, si, it's uh, a little bit firmer, a little bit uh, drier, so it's ready to be part of our zuppa inglese. That's why I suggest you to use parchment paper. Because as you can see, your spring form is completely clean and there is no a sticky problem. So what I do is, I cut it in half. So as you can see, is soft but not too soft. I'm going to cut slices of pan di spagna this size. Which means thick but not too thick. We are going to place our first layer in our baking tray. If you have uh, small uh, spaces like that, uh, as you do with the tiramisu, you cut uh, a slice of pan di spagna of the size that you like. This is uh, Alkermes, and is uh, the liqueur that we use uh, for zuppa inglese. Do you find this uh, in uh, US? Yes. It's cheap? No. <laughs> If you can't find uh, Alkermes, uh, you can substitute it with a liqueur that is uh, spiced though. Because at the end, Alkermes uh, is very ci cinnamon, cin cinnamon, tastes like cinnamon. Cinnamony? <laughs> si, it tastes like, uh, and it's, uh, it's a mix of spice. Keep in mind that your zuppa inglese will be never the same. But it will give you the idea. That is the moment in which, uh, in my opinion, a lot of people, they make the, their big mistake. Which is, they treat uh, the sponge cake and the alkermes like uh, ladyfinger and coffee for the tiramisu. As you know, for the tiramisu, you take a, you take a ladyfinger and you dip uh, in, uh, in coffee. If you do the same with the sponge cake, uh, with the pan di spagna, you will end up having a destroyed pan di spagna. You will uh, not even have crumbs of pan di spagna. The pan di spagna will be just mushy. You can see why you don't dip uh, the pan di spagna in the alkermes. So is that why so many zuppe inglesi? Is that the plural? Is that why so many of them are so soupy? See, si, because they dip, but it's uh, disgusting. <laughs> What instead you do is pour some alkermes in a bowl. Take a spoon and start to pour some of it. That's it? That's all that you add? See Harper, also because, don't forget, we are going to add the custard. And the custard is humid, so the sponge cake will absorb also the humidity of, the, of your custard. And it will be not dry, it will be the right amount of uh, wetness. <laughs> it does exist. <laughs> I'm starting with the white. Now we're back into tiramisu land again. Yes, because then the idea is the same. Different ingredients, but the idea is the same. And now another layer of sponge cake. Mm -hmm. 
And now we go with a layer of cocoa, see, cocoa chocolate, <laughs> cocoa custard. <laughs> Now we need to close our zuppa inglese with a custard of our choice. But because I like both, what I'm going to do is divide my zuppa inglese and put a part, cover a part with the cocoa one and the other part with the white one. Doesn't look too soupy. No, it's the right uh, amount of soupiness. <laughs> we cover it with plastic paper and we let it in the fridge overnight because as the tiramisu is much better if it's made the day before. Not that if you eat in one hour, two hours is bad, but believe me, it's better tomorrow. Please tell me you also made a full zuppa and glaze so that we have one to eat now. I would love to say, no, you need to wait, but yes, I <laughs> Like a very good tiramisu, you can see the layers. They just in one piece, it doesn't collapse. The last thing that we need to do before we eat it is dust with some cocoa powder. Just seeing this standing upright as an actual piece of Zupa Inglese is so different from so many of the bad ones I've had where it's spooned out kind of like a slop, just like bleh on your plate. If it's well done, it's an amazing dessert. If it's poorly done, it's really disgusting. That's kind of similar to tiramisu though, too. It's the same. A good yeah. tiramisu is unbelievable good, but a bad tiramisu is very, very bad. Is this also similar to a tiramisu in that you wouldn't recommend ordering it at a restaurant? No, in this case, uh, it, the situation is a little bit different. Oh, really? Because while the tiramisu has the mascarpone, that is a pretty expensive uh, ingredient also for a restaurant, in this case, it's just uh, milk. The custard is made out of milk. So. Uh, so they don't cut corners like they do with tiramisu. No, no. One thing I love is the colors that you get with Zupa Inglese. See, the Alkermes has this amazing color that uh, is uh, it's bright. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. Mm, that is a well-made Zupa Inglese. It's soft. It's something that you don't know, actually need to chew, it, but uh, it's not just a sloppy thing in your mouth. Well, you can still, like, you can still feel the pan di spagna, just like how in a good tiramisu, the, the cookies are still, they're still solid and they're soaked in the coffee, but they're still, they're there, they're, they're there. They're there. Yeah. They don't disappear, they are not, they are not, uh, like a uh, mushy piece of uh, some sort that I don't know what it is. You see how it stands perfect? Yeah, you can still see all the layers and everything. And it's very important to make it the day before. So you give time to hold the dessert to come together. Because you don't fully soak every part of the sponge cake in the liqueur, but this one, as it's because it's sat overnight, it is completely uh, spread out into all of the sponge cake while still using just the minimal amount of, of liquid possible. Because it's a sponge. I'm not jogging. True? Yeah, point, I'm not jogging. point taken. If you put enough water in a sponge, 
not too much. I let the sponge sit there. The part that is still dry absorb the humidity, so it's well wet all around without being too wet. So, last question. Why is this called English soup? I don't really know. You don't know? No, it's like, I know that there are several theories. There is someone who says that uh, it was called Zoop Inglese because it was made for an English ambassador. Someone else has some other idea. Personally, I don't know the truth. So if someone of you has any idea why <laughs> an Italian dessert is called Zoop Inglese and is made with Spanish bread, <laughs> tell us, please. It's going to be very hard not to eat all of this, Eva. So, Harper, I can help you, don't worry. Do you know what your mom said to me this morning? She knew that we were doing this video, and I kid you not, this morning I was leaving the house, and she <laughs> goes like, don't fill up on Zoop and Glaze today. I'm making a big dinner, I need you hungry. You go tell those nice people, bon appetito, and then put it aside and don't eat it. She said that to me. <laughs> Sorry, mama. A quick shout out to a pasta grammarian in all kinds of action. This is Jenny, and she does recreations of medieval food. And here she is in her medieval garb making macaruna pasta. Bravo, Jenny! We are so proud of you, and you know this. <laughs> the recipe for the Zupa Inglese will be down below. If you try it, send us a picture on Facebook or Instagram, at Pasta Grammar. We'd love to see your not-so-soupy English soup. With Spanish bread. With Spanish bread. Give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and we will see you next time. Ciao! Um, but she told you to not fill up with Zupa Inglese, but she didn't tell me. <laughs> Do you know what she's making? It's a surprise. You guys want to see what Mama Rosa made me for dinner? Mm -hmm.